Hey beauties, good evening to you. You know, I'm here uh, listening to some different uh, preachers and speakers and uh, something just came to, to, came to my mind, sorry. You know, after listening to one particular pastor speaking. And uh, one of the sad realities is that many Christians, because they have a guilty conscience, they assume or they dub everything that seems like an anomaly, that seems different from how they have been taught as sinful. It doesn't matter what it is. So for example, if somebody comes into the fold of Christ and they don't look like them, so their hair is not natural, they are without, um, they, they wear jewelry, they wear, wear makeup, they dressed very flamboyant, you know, but their hearts are pure because their personality is also a part of the package. God made us all different. You and I cannot be the same individual. The world would be extremely boring. And what would be the point? How would we know that when God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you were fashioned in a marvelous way? You know, there is no one, you know, b basically how he made us. There's none like each individual. Each has a unique print an imprint in them. So what would be the point of that? So we're all different. Some extroverted, some introverted, some flamboyant, some semi-flamboyant, some are very simple. That is how God makes us. And even when you come into the fold, that difference will still shine forth. It, you know, it, it will still radiate. Some will be more laid back. Some will not be. Some will grow into, move from being laid back into flamboyance in a sense, and some may pull back as the case may be. But what has happened is that when something or when some people did not get the opportunity to do what they see some people do, they dub it as a sin. They say the person is not spiritual, the person is not Christian, the person is fake, the person is false. Not knowing that you're probably um, calling down curses on yourself because you don't know how God is using that individual to draw different kinds of people onto him. Let us use Saul of Tars, Tar, um, Tarsus. Of Tarsus, sorry. Saul, before he became Paul, a brilliant man in his day. And uh, as a non Christian at the time, he would have been, those are the men who only moved with the elite. He was a tent maker. Tent maker doesn't mean you're making a tent. You're talking about the clothes that you see them wear in those days. And it was a very expensive material. You know, uh, it was the elite who wore it. And uh, Paul being such a brilliant man, you know, he would have been able to speak to a certain crowd. Now, when he became a Christian, when he moved and God changed his name from Saul to Paul, God still had to use him to talk to a certain crowd that maybe Peter could not reach to, or even Matthew, or some of the other disciples because of the level of brilliance. I don't even remember the name of that particular um guy. I was just listening to something, you know, that when Paul went before him, King Agrippa was it, I think, that he said, boy, you almost convinced me. Come back another day. You almost got to me. That is what took place. He, they had to put Paul, God had to save um, a man like Saul who became Paul to reach a certain crowd. So in other words, not because something looks different from you means that it is sinful or it is guilty. Everything, and when I say everything, I put that in quotations, a number of Christian dub as sinful. If you see somebody put on a shot, they're sinning. Where did you get that from? Who says that? Do you see that? in the? Can you back that up with the word of God? If you see somebody wear... Um, a blows that's sinful that's a, you i mean we dub every thing basically as sinful and i'm only using these examples to give to make a point you know that it has to do with the inner man of that individual it means that their mindset what has been promulgated over the years and i can tell you this from experience is that church has not done what christ did remember when mary magdalene who is said to be a former prostitute and she came with her most expensive perfume and washed Jesus' feet with it and really use our hair to wipe it, you know, and the, the, like the, and it tells the, the mindset of the disciples, you know, they claim that they love Jesus, but yet they were saying, oh, but you know, easy, I'm putting it in our way. She use an expensive something upon Jesus. You see how they value them, value Jesus? You see how them never easy? They really had to be trained. You know, there's a stingy nature in most of us. If we see somebody use something expensive and to you, it looks like a frivolous move, we feel that they're wasting it. She was being an excellent steward of the perfume. 
as a matter of fact, the perfume is like dung compared to who Jesus is. There's nothing that could, there's no expensive perfume that can really showcase the love that anybody has for her. Not one. I don't care if it costs one million pounds sterling or a billion pounds sterling or a trillion pounds sterling. It's still like dung. So in other words, their mindset was still stingy and that's why he had to work on them. He said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Like he had to teach them, don't do this, don't do that. When the children were coming unto him, like he wanted to ward them up. Because, you know, some people have to depicted them, get trouble on them, they're unruly. And she said, uh-uh, unless you're like one of these, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. When they threw the lady who committed adultery in, in his presence, he just wrote whatever he wrote in the sand. All of us can speculate what he wrote. He wrote whatever he wrote. He probably was just not, not probably not him, just probably just marking up the sand too. May not have been anything spe specific. And he said, all right, all right. Hold the stones in your hand. Just one thing I ask of you. If you have never sinned in your life and if you are without any form of sin, you can go ahead and stone her because we're still under the law. Remember, Jesus didn't die as yet. So they were still practicing it all. They were still sacrificing animals and so on. They were still under the Mosaic law. And he came with a different way. He never condemned any one of these people that he approached. Zacchaeus. Nicodemus, not one of them he condemned and the church has done the opposite and you wonder why your churches have dwindled. You have done the complete opposite. Nobody was saying that any one of us should laud sin, but you have, you have, you have promulgated a message of guilt and shame and sin in its highest form, even above what the Bible has spoken about, that everything that you see, you call it sin. Sin, 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 sin. It, I, it's... <laughs> My goodness gracious, I want you to understand that the grace of God would actually transform the man or woman who is engaged in sin and pull you away from that and pull you closer. You, you want, I can tell you from experience, you want to not sin against God. You want to serve him when that grace hits you, but it doesn't come in the form of bullying. A lot of churches, that's what you are doing. You're bullying people psychologically, you're bullying people mentally you're bullying people emotionally you're not coming with a transformative word it is almost don't misunderstand what i'm saying you know how they would say slander in its original slander really means speaking truth with evil intent if i were to juxtapose it you may not necessarily come in with evil intent but you come with an intent that is not grounded under grace it is not grounded in the word of god so it almost would be slanderous in a sense and i'm not calling the word of god that please note just use critical thinking skills with what I'm saying. Your word is not being transformative. It's not, tr you're shaming people, disgracing people. And that is why they fall out because it's not built on solid ground. It is not built on f the foundations of what Jesus wanted. You can't guilt people and almost bully them. Come out of this. Come out of this. I got into whatever. Don't get me wrong. There's a place for it sometimes. And funny enough, when Jesus did that, when he spoke to the people who, who sinned, he was really talking about like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Zealots, the scribes, because he knew that their hearts were fake and false. They were far from him. He knew that they were fake. So when he preached about like sin and all of that, it was predominantly for them. But he came with grace for those who wanted salvation. When we think about people like Matthew Nicodemus and Zacchaeus and all these, some of these tax collectors, right? Them come like we see them politician, a trickster, general, thief, corrupt people. And he said, come down Zacchaeus, I'm going, to, I'm going to dine with you tonight. He never condemned them. He never condemned them. He loved them into transformation. You don't condemn people to change. It does not work. When you add guilt and shame, they get worse in the situation. And that is a message that... So when you see people that look different, that is promulgating the message of Christ, you're going to say they are fake because it, you were not schooled and taught in that way. You only know them. They must have a particular look. The hair must look a certain way. The face must look a certain way. The dress must... And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you must not. You must dress immodest. Or not modestly. Don't get, don't misunderstand what I'm talking about. I'm not expecting you to wear a bikini on the platform. You understand? Or a B ride on the platform. So we're not going to... I have to take it down to the granular level. But that does not constitute somebody being saved or not. There are people who went to look the Christian part and it's straight to hell they're going. Straight to hell they're going. Love people into the kingdom. 
and leave the rest to God. Guys, follow me, follow me on TikTok, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please share this.